Let's walk through four different ways to get weather information over RF. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So on more than one occasion this past summer, I found myself out in the RV in various locations where I didn't have a good cell phone connection or I had no cell phone service at all. And in those cases, being limited with the internet since we rely on the cell phones for internet, I was looking for alternate ways to get a weather forecast or current weather information. And I wanted to share with you guys today four of those ways that I came up with. In fact, I'll even give you a bonus towards the end of this video. Now, the first one is something that we're all probably aware of, and that's the NOAA weather radio frequencies available to us here in the United States. And this is a fantastic way to get weather information because it takes such little equipment to make that happen. A simple HT will give you those frequencies so that you can get the weather information. Now, a lot of HTs today come with those radio frequencies programmed in already. For instance, the FT65R, you can simply press and hold the 1 on the keypad, and it'll jump over to those pre-programmed weather frequencies. On the FT65R, there's a two-button combination, so you press the menu button first, and then P receiver on the screen to get access to the weather frequencies. Even on radios like the Baofeng that don't come pre-programmed with those weather frequencies, you can program them into the radio before heading out, so you'll have easy and quick access to them. Now, the next way to get weather information when you're out and about over RF is using APRS. Now, this does require an APRS HT or at least an HT that you've got connected to, say, an Android or an iPhone running some APRS software. With either of those combinations, you can then send a weather request to WXBOT or WXYO. And I have done a video on that in the past that goes into that in quite a bit more detail, so I'll leave a link to that down in the description below if that's something you're interested in. Now, number three on the list is probably my favorite way to get a weather forecast if I don't have internet available, and that's using the WinLink system. Now, this feature will work both with WinLink Express running on Windows, or it can work with Pat WinLink running on Linux. If you're using WinLink Express, you want to check out something called the catalog or the catalog request inside of WinLink Express. I'm not super familiar with it as I don't run that software, but I do know that it's available there for you. If you're running Pat WinLink on uh, a Linux machine, you can install Pat Menu as well and be able to request weather for your current location based on GPS data. So you post that request to the outbox and you go ahead and send that out using WinLink. Give it about five minutes and then you can make another WinLink connection and that weather forecast will be delivered right back to your inbox. And that's probably my preferred way of getting a weather forecast when I'm off grid. Now the next way we can gather some weather data is decoding images broadcast by NOAA. And we can use software like FL Digi in the WeFax mode to be able to decode those images. Those are broadcast uh, almost around the clock and there is a set schedule. I'll leave a link to a web page down below that you might want to check out if this is something you're interested in doing. Two of my favorite images to download from this service is the IR satellite images and the 24-hour surface forecast. So both of those I find helpful in knowing what the weather is going to be doing in the next 12 to 24 hours. So those are my four go-to, but I do have a bonus for you. This is something that I haven't had much chance to explore, but it's something that I want to look at doing this year. And that is downloading the images direct from the NOAA satellites. So I believe there's four different satellites that circle the Earth. And as those are overhead, we can utilize some software to download 
those images. Now Josh with HRCC has done a video on this, I believe it's a couple of years back. I'll leave a link to that video down in the description below. But he used some software called WX2IMG to download and or to decode those images. However, that software is really, really old. I don't really think it's being maintained anymore. And I had no luck getting it to run on Linux Mint. I got it to install, but I just couldn't get everything configured correctly with the software. And I think that's just limitations of the software. There is another project out there, though, called NOAA APT 1.4. And again, I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. That's something that I haven't had a chance to play with. I found that in doing some research for this particular video, but that's something that I'll want to be exploring in the near future. If that's something you're interested in and would like to see a video on, leave a comment down below and we'll see if we can get that video made. So the next time you find yourself out of service range for cellular telephone and no internet, you'll have a good idea of several different ways you can use to get the weather over RF. Thanks for tuning in today. If you found the information helpful, be sure to leave us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.